Okay, now we're gonna talk about the very basics of logic. We're gonna build a simple push button circuit to turn on a light bulb, and then we are going to logically invert that circuit so that the push button turns off the light bulb. Then we're gonna rebuild the circuit, but with a transistor so that something other than our finger pushing a button can turn the light on and off. And then we're gonna invert that transistor circuit so that whatever signal comes in the door gets inverted on its way out. And we're gonna start drawing some very basic circuit diagrams by hand so that we have a way to talk about our ideas without the mess of wires confusing things. You're gonna need some basic supplies and components. And as you get things out, whether it's here in the makerspace or at home, practice neat and tidy organization. It goes so far toward understanding these ideas. Okay, get a power adapter and an Arduino, a breadboard, jumper wires, and the multimeter. Then in our box of tiny components, components, get an LED, a push button, and a transistor. And you don't need to know much about them at this point because the first thing we're gonna do is play. Get your Arduino connected to your power adapter, and then get a red jumper wire into five volts and a black jumper wire into ground. And then just forget that the Arduino exists and imagine plus five volts on the red wire and plus zero volts on the black. Get plus five volts on the positive rail and plus zero on the negative rail. And then just leave them there for the rest of our experiments so that whenever you need plus five volts, you've got it. And whenever you need to return to ground, you've got it. And because the world is a complex place, plus zero V, G, N, D, ground, and this symbol here all mean the same thing. Okay, grab a resistor out of our handy resistors organizer. And I'm gonna use a 220 ohm resistor because that's gonna give me the resistance that I need to keep my LED from exploding. And it's gonna let my LED be nice and bright. And if you can't find any pre-bent 220 ohm resistors, if everything in the drawer is just straight from the factory, Grab a pair of tweezers and bend the legs at 90 degrees to the resistor body, and then snip the legs so that they're about half as deep as the breadboard itself. Too long and the resistor is going to be sticking way up in the air, and too short and the resistor is not going to make good contact. It's not going to stay put. Okay, let's get that resistor into the breadboard. I'm going to put it on column E, and remember resistors don't have a direction, so it can go in either way. I'm going to follow up with the push button. The push button doesn't have a direction either. I'm going to put this in column E as well. And then the LED. LEDs are directional. So let's put the anode, the longer leg, the one that's expecting the positive side of our current, on top. Also on column E. And there's nothing special about column E. It's just a neat and tidy column to put this idea in a line. And it's not yet connected because each leg of each component is only connected to the other sockets on the same row. So grab some jumper wires and start connecting things. Get from positive five volts to the top of your resistor. And then imagine your circuit is still open, but it is now connected down to here. Connect from the bottom of your resistor to the top of your push button. And then imagine that this is slightly different. This is a push button that is normally open, which means that our connection actually only goes to the top of the push button. It doesn't get down to row 16 at the bottom of the push button. That's fine. That's what a push button is supposed to do. Now connect from the bottom of the push button to the top of the LED, the anode, and imagine that this is your circuit. And notice this open spot in the circuit right here because this push button is normally open. That gap means that when we make the final connection from the bottom of the LED back to ground, that the LED is not going to turn on. And that's good. That's what we want. We've made a push button circuit and it's waiting for us to push this button right here to close the circuit, to complete it. And look at that. Push the button and the circuit completes and the light turns on. Release the button and the button returns to its normal state. And the normal state of this push button is open. It is normally open. And an open circuit does not allow electrons to flow through it. So the light 
turns back off. Now, if you're an absolute beginner, take time to sit with these concepts, these words, these ideas until they feel somewhat comfortable. And if you've got questions, ask them. Ask me. Leave a comment. Ask a peer nearby. And then pause the video and see if you can start grappling with the next idea. Can you use these same components using just a few additional jumper wires to have the light be normally on such that the push push button turns it off. Can you invert this circuit so that it does the opposite? If you can, great. You might be a bit further along in your journey into electronics. And if not, no worries. That's what we're going to do step by step now. First, let's strip everything off the breadboard until we're back to that single 220 ohm resistor. Then let's solve a piece of the puzzle, the scenario where the light bulb is normally on. For this part, I don't even need the button. I just need to connect my power through the resistor resistor to the LED and back to ground. Good, that wasn't so hard. Now, how can I use this push button to turn the LED off? Well, first let's think about why the LED is even on in the first place. And the only thing that can make an LED turn on is electrical current flowing through it. So right now there is electrical current flowing through the light bulb. But why? Well, if we use the analogy that electrical current is like pressurized water being pumped through a pipe, Perhaps it's easier to ask what would water do? Well, here's our pump supplying five volts worth of pressure on our pipe, and here's our pipe flowing all the way to the end of our circuit. And at this point, you might even ask, why is the electricity flowing through the pipe at all? Why isn't it just blasting out into the room in chaotic bolts of electricity? And there the water analogy is really helpful because like water flows downhill from a place of higher potential energy to a lower one, from a place of higher pressure to lower pressure, so does the electricity. And not only does the water flow downhill, it flows following the path of least resistance. The electricity is flowing through the LED because it's easier than flowing through the air. If we can create a path that's even easier than flowing through the LED, then it'll go down that path instead, following the path of least resistance. So let's make a junction, a branch in the path such that either we can flow through the LED or we can come all the way around this other way. Let's create that other path with real wires and see which way the current prefers to flow. And let's interrupt that path with a push button so that it can be connected or not at a moment's notice. Okay, now when I push the push button, I give the electrical current the option of flowing down a path of even lower resistance, and it does. The LED goes dark. The electrical current flows down the easier path, the path of lower resistance. We have successfully inverted the function of the push button. It's now turning the LED off. One quick note, don't build this alternative path above your resistor. Otherwise, you will short circuit your Arduino, causing it to explode and bringing shame to your family. Next up, we will start drawing very simple circuit diagrams as a way of talking more clearly about our ideas, more clear than this mess of wires that usually presents on the breadboard.